Hello, my name is Colin Mahler and welcome to Beeducation.com. I am going to be your instructor today for the Open Round Chainmail Bracelet. This is a fun and fairly simple project that we are going to be doing today. So are you ready? Let's go get started. So here are tools and materials for our Open Round Chainmail Bracelet. We are going to be using one pair of chain nose pliers and one pair of bent chain nose pliers. Uh, you will also need your handy dandy paper clip or just a piece of wire, something to put on the end of your bracelet so you have a handle to hold on to everything. Uh, we are going to be using a four millimeter 18 gauge jump ring to make this bracelet today. You'll need about 180 jump rings uh, to make about seven inches or seven and a half inches of chain. And you will also need just a simple little clasp or a fancy one if you choose, but a clasp of your choice. And you just wanna make sure that if you're cutting your jump rings with flush cutters, make sure that the ends, the very end of your coil or the end of each jump ring needs to be cut flush on both sides. You don't want any points on the end of your jump ring, so just keep that in mind if you're making your own. So before we can begin uh, putting our bracelet together, we need to prep all of our jump rings. Your jump rings, when you get them, are neither all the way open nor all the way closed, so we are going to have to close up a couple and then open up all the rest before we can start putting our bracelet together. Um, Ooh. I am using, um, again, a bent chain nose plier and a chain nose plier. Uh, my chain nose plier I use in my right hand. I'm right-handed, so your chain nose plier should be in your dominant hand, and your bent chain nose plier should be in your non-dominant hand. And the tips of these bent chain nose pliers should be pointed towards the outside of your hand. You don't want the tips pointed towards your other tool, otherwise you're just battling with the tips of your tools as you're uh, manipulating your jump rings. So you wanna flip those pliers around, have these tips pointed away. And you also wanna keep your thumbs on top of your tools as opposed to gripping them like this. You wanna keep your thumbs up here on the top of your tools. That will give you a lot more control over what you're doing. So we're gonna start by opening a jump ring, or well, many of them, but we are going to go over how to properly open and close our jump rings. So I use my bent chain nose plier as my stabilizing plier and my chain nose plier tends to be more of my manipulating plier. So I'm gonna take my jump ring and I'm going to put it in my bent chain nose plier and the opening of this jump ring is up at the 12 o'clock position here. It's pointed straight up at the ceiling. And you want to, when you're prepping your jump rings or uh, anytime really you're manipulating your jump rings with your tools, you want to avoid using just the tips of your tools to do so. You wanna grab onto your jump ring with as much of your plier as possible. This will keep uh, your jump rings from becoming warped. Um, so instead of staying flat, they will be a little bit wavy if you go in, if, if you're using the tips of your pliers to open and close your rings. So I've got my jump ring here in my bent chain nose pliers. I'm gonna grab the other side of my jump ring with my chain nose pliers and look how I'm grabbing uh, the other half of my jump ring pretty much. And I'm just gonna take this ring and I'm, or the other half of this ring, and I'm gonna take my chain nose pliers and I'm just gonna give them a twist away from me, about a quarter of a turn and open up my jump ring like so. You wanna see that again? Let's do it again. Here's another jump ring. I'm gonna place it in my bent chain nose pliers. Again, the opening is up here at the 12 o'clock position. I'm gonna grab the other side of this jump ring with my chain nose pliers. And right now my chain nose pliers, the tips are pointed up at the ceiling. I'm gonna grab the other end side of my jump ring and I'm gonna give it a twist so that the tips of my uh, chain nose pliers are now pointed at the wall in front of me. And that will give you a nice open jump ring. And now we're gonna close a couple of jump rings. So for this pattern, we're gonna start with two jump rings that are closed and we're gonna open all the rest of our jump rings. So to close your two jump rings, I will again place my jump ring in my bent chain nose pliers. The opening again is up at the 12 o'clock position. I'm gonna grab the other side of my jump ring and I am going to twist the two ends past each other, back past the point where they meet. Now what I'm doing here is 
I'm rocking the two ends past each back and forth. I'm trying to work them together. Now, these jump rings have a very tiny little gap between the two ends that I'm trying to close up. So I'm using a very gentle inward pressure as I'm using this rocking motion. And did you hear that little click? The little click, and don't rely on the click. Sometimes you'll feel it through your pliers and sometimes you will hear an audible click. But that just means that the two ends of the jump ring have touched each other, they're hitting each other. So now all I need to do is make sure that I line the two ends up. And I'm just gonna do that by kind of giving the two ends a little bit of a wiggle until I can get them to line up nicely. So I've closed the gap. Here's the seam right here. So I've closed that gap and I've lined up both ends. And you wanna take a look from both the side of your jump ring oops, and the top of your jump ring to make sure that you've got it nicely closed. Like so. So now that we have prepped all of our jump rings, we should have two closed jump rings and about 178 open jump rings. And now we're ready to start constructing our bracelet. And we're gonna start with a, one of our open rings. And I'm gonna take the two jump rings that I've closed, I'm gonna put them on that open ring, and I'm gonna close it up. like so. And now I'm gonna take my paper clip and you'll notice I tend to hold my jump rings, everything I do with my jump rings, I tend to do it with my pliers. Feel free to experiment with this or if that's really uncomfortable for you, you can uh, just use your fingers. Everybody has their own way of getting their chain mail together. So you'll just have to play and find your own way. So now that I have this together, I'm gonna to take my paper clip now and I'm going to attach that paper clip to that single jump ring on the end. And the paper clip is just so I have a handle so I know what direction I'm uh, working in and uh, so that I actually have something to hold on to until this chain becomes a little more substantial. Okay, so we have started our chain and we have a single ring that has two rings uh, hanging off of it. Now the open round chain mail, uh, each link, once we get into the pattern and get it started, but each uh, link of this chain has consists of a total of three rings. So we're starting with one, moving up to two, and our next step will be to move into our three ring uh, pattern that we're going to be doing. So I'm gonna take these two rings here and I'm gonna take one of my open jump rings. I'm going to go through, oops, both of these rings here. And I will close this jump ring. Like so. So that's one ring going through both of these rings here. My next step is going to be to take a ring and go through this, just one ring, and go through here, and another ring, and I'll go through this ring over here. And both of these rings that I'm going to add will need to stay on the same side as this ring that I have put through both of these. Um, and what I mean by that is that I want all three of these rings, when I get them all on, to be able to open up in like a little flower pattern. Uh, and if you add one ring on this side, of this ring and the other one over on the other on the other side they're all going to stack up and they won't open up like they need to so i'm going to flip that single ring over there and i'm going to add one open jump ring to one of these two rings here and this is going to this chain looks like a total mess until you get to about the first inch of it. So don't get discouraged if it doesn't look like much of anything right off the bat. Okay, so I've added that. And if you ever get lost in this chain, just let the whole thing hang from the paper clip down towards the table. And then it's a little easier to see what's going on. Because once you flip it over, it all, kinds of tr it all turns into this mishmash mess here. 
So I've added my ring here. Now I'm going to come over and add my, another open ring over on the other side here. And I'm going to close it up. Let everything hang down again. And now I'm going to arrange my rings so they can make kind of a little three leaf, three petal flower here, or a little triangle. So now we have established our three rings. This is, we're going to pretty much build off of this and keep continuing on with the pattern. And keep in mind this pattern, uh, the open round is a very uh, round <laughs> uh, from the name, oh, that's pretty obvious, and tubular chain. So there's an open space in the center of this chain. It's not uh, real densely woven. So our next ring, so we're gonna take another open ring. I'm gonna come in here and I'm gonna go through whoop, two of our three rings here. You see that? See, it's a mess, isn't it? So I've picked up two of my three rings. I'm gonna go ahead and close this. And let's see, here's the ring. I just added, it's right here. Hmm. There we go. So here's the ring I added. Now I'm gonna come in with another open ring and I'm going to pick up another two of these three rings. I'm kind of coming from the outside and going in, picking up those two rings. I'm going to close this. And when you let it hang upside down, there we go, you can start to see a little bit. I can see that I only have two rings here hanging from the bottom instead of three. Flip it up, again, flip it around again. And here are my two rings that I've just added, so I need to add one more. And I tend to look at these three rings as sort of a, a little triangle, and I'm kind of going in and closing up each corner of the triangle. So there I've got my third corner there. And now I'm just gonna close this up. And remember, don't rely on that click. You don't always hear it. Okay, so again, here's my little mess. You can't really tell what's going on. Flip it up again. And I'm going to find the three rings that I just added and I'm going to arrange them into my little flower again. So these are the three rings that I just added. And now I'm going to repeat the same thing. So I'm going to go in and I'm going to pick up two out of my three jump rings with an open ring and I'm going to close it. So here's the ring I just added right here. Take another open ring, go through two more of these rings.
and of course close it. And then I have one more ring to add right here. Take another open ring, go through those last two. Close it up nicely. There we go. Okay, so it's kind of starting to look like something. And we're just going to keep on going. So you are just going to basically wash, rinse, and repeat. So what we've just been doing, you're going to continue doing, adding the three rings to each corner of your triangle. And you are going to continue doing that until you get your bracelet just about as long as you want it to. And don't forget, you will have to add length for your clasp on your chain. So you don't want to make your chain too long and then end up having to take some off uh, when you add your clasp on. So you might want to choose your clasp ahead of time so you know how long it is and know how much length to leave off of your bracelet uh, as you're making your chain. So I've gone ahead and added a couple more rows to my bracelet here and as you can see we're at just about an inch and the pattern is definitely becoming visible. It's looking less like a jumble of jump rings and more like an actual chain. So now you're going to continue on, keep on doing what you're doing until you get a little further along and uh, then we will talk about adding our clasp. So here I have gone ahead and built up my chain to almost six inches, it's a little short of six inches, and I have three different clasps up here that I can potentially use. And you definitely, you want to pick out your clasp before you finish up your chain so that you know, again, how long to make your chain. And so we have a box clasp here, and remember on pretty much all of these clasps. You're going to have to add, probably add a ring on each side to attach your clasp, so that's going to add a little bit of length as well. Now I wear my bracelets at about seven inches, and I can see right here that this is probably going to end up with adding the jump rings, little about seven and a quarter, so it's a little over seven inches. So I would probably, if I was going to use this clasp, I'd probably want to back this down a row or two and make this piece of chain a little bit shorter. And I have a nice heavy spring ring here that I can use. And again, we haven't finished, and we also keep in mind we haven't actually finished off the other end of our chain. So we're going to have uh, two more rows of rings that we'll be adding on the end here before we can actually, or at least one more, and then we can attach our clasp. So this one. It would end up to be about about seven inches exactly, so I, I think I would leave my chain as it is right now to get a seven inch chain. And then with this simple little spring ring or lobster claw here, I would probably want to add a, a, another row or two of chain before I went ahead and attached my clasps because this is going to be a little bit short with this lobster claw. So I am going to go ahead and use my big spring ring here, partly so I don't have to make any more chain right now. It's a cheater clasp, by the way. The longer it is, the less chain you have to make. So now, before I can actually attach my clasp, I need to go ahead and finish off this end of my chain. So once again, before I attach my clasp, I need to finish off this end of the chain. Right now it's just loose and open and there is no um, finishing end on it. And what we're going to do is we're going to make this end of our chain match our beginning, the beginning end of our chain. And if you look at the beginning of your chain, you'll see that we go from one ring to two and finally to three and continue on with the three rings all through our pattern. So when we get to the other end, we're going to have to reduce it down the same way as the beginning. So we have our three rings here on the end. I'm going to take an open jump ring. And so on this row of rings, I'm only going to add two rings instead of the three. 
So I'm going to go through two of those three rings, and it doesn't matter which rings you choose to go through. I'm going to close this up. And then I'm going to take another open ring. And I'm going to go through another two of those three rings on the end. I'm going to close this up. And I'm not going to add that third ring on this row. I'm just going to leave it with the two. So here I just have those two rings. And then I'm going to take a single open ring and I'm going to go through the two rings that I just added. And this will be the end of my chain. And I'm going to go ahead and take my clasp and before I close this ring up, take my clasp and attach it to this single jump ring on the end. So, so there we go. My clasp is attached to this single ring on the end of my chain. And since my clasp is, or the loop on my clasp is large enough to allow me to do this, I'm going to take a second ring and attach it to the end of the chain here. So I'm just going to double this ring up and that will just make this a sturdier connection. here at the end of the chain where you get the most wear and tear and abuse. So as you can see there, I've just used two rings to attach my clasp to the end of my chain, like so. And this isn't the nice, this ending and beginning is a little sloppy, but there's really no better way to do it. So it gets a little tight and jumbly right here at the ends, but it's okay. You'll probably be the only one that notices. So now I'm going to come to the other end of my chain and take my paper clip off. And I'm going to open up this ring. clasp and attach the other side of my clasp to this end of the chain. Close this ring back up and again on this side too I'm going to add another ring here. I'm going to double this ring. I'll try to anyway. And of course, I'm going to close this ring up. And I recommend that as you're going along and closing all your jump rings, make sure they're closed nicely the first time. You don't want to have to go back through your chain and try and reclose any rings that weren't done well enough the first time because it gets really tight in here to try and get in and try and open and or close any of these rings. But here is the finished chain, clasp attached and all. So my first love was beads and I love to add beads into my chainmail patterns as much as possible. Unfortunately, this pattern is not um, as conducive to adding beads as some other patterns are. This is not something that you would want to take wire wrapped bead and add right into the middle because of this awkward ending that we have. Uh, it just looks really junky um, on either side of the bead. So you don't really want to break this in, into sections and add wire wrapped beads in between the sections because it just doesn't look real pretty. So what I like to do if I'm going to add a bead onto my chain is to just take a wire wrapped bead and add it onto the end or one on either end of my chain. 
And for this, I've uh, used a different clasp since I'm gonna be adding a bead onto the end of my chain. So I've switched it out to just a, a simple lobster claw. And I have my bead already wire wrapped and ready to go. And if you don't know how to uh, wrap your beads, you can either go to our free class on making basic loops, or you can go and take our class on wire jewelry fundamentals, and that will teach you how to make a wire wrapped loop among many other things. So I have my bead already, and I'm just going to take an open jump ring. And on the end of this end of the chain, I, I'm here with my two jump rings and I'm ready to go down to the single jump ring on the end to finish it off, which is what I've just added. And I'm gonna take my bead and slide my bead onto that jump ring. Close it up. Like so, and I don't know if I've made this loop on my wire wrap large enough. Oh, just barely to go through my lobster claw. Or you can add another jump ring onto the end of this or onto the other loop of your wire wrapped bead. So I'm going to take my open jump ring, go ahead and put it through the other loop on my wire wrapped bead and close it up. And I will use this ring as the other end of my clasp to put my lobster claw through. It's being a single woman, I don't have anyone to help me put my bracelets on. It's easier if I have a larger loop to work with. Like so. Now um, my bead, you can use pretty much any bead um, that makes you happy. This is a nice little German lamp worked bead. Uh, it's about an eight millimeter bead. And this, the gauge of the wire that you wanna to use to wrap it will really depend on the size of the hole in the bead. You wanna use the thickest wire you can uh, fit through the hole in your bead. On this, I it's got a fairly small hole and I'm addicted to 24 gauge wire. So I use 24 gauge wire to wrap my bead here, but if this had had an, um, any larger of a hole, I would have gone up to 22 gauge or 20 gauge, depending on the size of the hole. So if you want to make this bracelet a little smaller and a little more delicate, um, you would want to use not only a smaller ring, a smaller sized ring, but also in a thinner wire gauge. So you would want to make a, or use a 20 gauge wire and make these rings um, a three millimeter inner diameter jump ring in the 20 gauge wire. And that will make the whole bracelet smaller and more delicate looking. But that also means that you need to have more rings. So in the three millimeter uh, 20 gauge size, you'd need about 210 rings to make about a seven and a half inch bracelet um, or a seven and a half inch piece of chain. Now, if you wanted to make this bracelet a little chunkier and a little larger, you'd want to use a 16 gauge wire and a five millimeter inner diameter jump ring. And the basic rule of thumb for chain mail is if you want to make your piece larger, you need to use a thicker wire and a larger ring size. And if you wanna make it smaller, it needs to be a smaller ring size and a thinner wire. Uh, you can't take a say a 20, a 20 gauge jump ring in a four millimeter and use it the same way you did here. The proportions will not be the same and your chain will not hold together as well. So again, if you wanna make this smaller, go down in wire size and ring size. And if you want it larger, go up in wire size and ring size as well. Now in the 16 gauge, uh, because the rings are larger, you will not need as many as you do in the 18 gauge wire here. You would need about, uh, 160 of the five millimeter 16 gauge jump rings. Well, thank you for joining me today. I hope you had a really good time making your open round chain mail bracelet. Um, if you have any questions or want to give us any feedback, please feel free to shoot us an email here at beachcation.com and I'll see you next time.